number 23. The expression 4x squared plus bx minus 45, where b is a constant, can be rewritten as hx plus k times x plus j, where h, k, and j are integer constants. Which of the following must, must, that's going to be the key here, must be an integer, not could be, not might be, has to be. Okay, this is a conceptual one. This section seems to have quite a few of those. But let's, let's think about, we have to think about FOIL. We have to think about that multiplying binomials, how that works, and what is the result when we do that. Okay, so 4x squared plus bx minus 45. And it can be factored. This can be factored. And yeah, let's make it colorful. <laughs> so it can be factored as hx plus k times, eh, I'm rethinking this. <laughs> it can be factored as hx plus k, <clears throat> excuse me, times x plus j. Okay. Now, when I first looked at this, I thought I had to try to figure out what h, k, and j are, what exactly they are. It kind of, I mean, one of them you can figure out, h you can figure out, but the rest you can't. We're told that h, k, and j are integers. They are like 1, 5, negative 7, 10. No fractions, no decimals, they are integers. So that's helpful. Now think about FOIL, like how FOIL works. I promise we'll get over here to that in a minute. <laughs> what happens to get from those binomials up to this. We would multiply the first, we would multiply the outside, the inside, and then the last. So let's do that. Let's multiply these out and see what happens. Well, hx times x would be hx squared. Then I would have my outside, which would be hx times j. So j times hx then I would have inside k times x. And then finally, I would have k times j. Now, if we compare these, compare what we got here to what we have here, you'll notice a couple of things. Well, one, we know that h has to be 4, right? It's the number in front of the x squared. It has to be 4. So I'm going to write that over here. h equals 4. And I'm going to go ahead and replace it. There we go. 4 times j times x plus k times x plus k times j. The next one is this last one, k times j. There's no x. That must be negative 45. And I know they're both integers, right? So I know k times j equals negative 45. All right, so I can kind of assume that there's going to be some combination here, and the negative could be on either one, that k could be four, uh, 1, j could be 45, and either of those, one of them has to be negative to get that negative, that um, k is 45 and j is 1. The only two other options are 5 and 9, or 9 and 5. So those are my integers that multiply actually, no, sorry, <laughs> and 3 and 15 and 15 and 3. Okay, there we go. So those are my integers, almost forgot one, <laughs> that multiply to 45. And again, that negative can be anywhere, just as long as one of those is a negative. Okay, so I kind of have some ideas as to what this would be. And so I know that, you know, I'm going to replace that over here. Ah, random ruler. That k times j is the same as negative 45. All right. Now that I kind of have all these, you know, this functionality and that, you know, 4j plus k equals b. I know that as well because 4jx plus kx equals bx. So 4j plus k equals b. I also know that. All right. So let's look at our options. Which of the followings, following must be an integer? b divided by h. Huh. You go b divided by h. 
the only way that this must be an integer is if b were equal to four times an integer. No, we have no way of knowing that. We know that b is equal to 4j plus k. How do I know that that's divisible by 4? I don't. In fact, it's pretty unlikely that it's divisible by 4, looking at what j and k could be over here. You know, if I plugged this in, like if I plugged in 15 or a negative 15 in for j and a 3 in for k, I'm getting an odd number when I do that. So already I can tell just with one example, this must not be true. A is out. B divided by K. Same kind of thing. B is part, K is added to a number to get to B. It's not being multiplied. K would have to be multiplied by something to get to B in order for it to always be an integer. That's what we're looking for. These two things are being, because all of these are being divided. So we want to have the opposite be true, that two numbers are getting multiplied together to form this number. So previous one, it was like, what's being multiplied together to get the H? Well, H is not getting multiplied by anything. <laughs> that was A. And then B, we have B divided by K. K is getting added into something to form B. These two are getting added together to make B. But they're not getting multiplied by anything to make B. Like, okay. So as you probably guessed here k times j equaling negative 45. Look at our c and d. 45 divided by h or 45 div divided by k must be an integer. First, 45 divided by h. Well, we know h is 4. So we can eliminate this one without even doing any hypotheticals because we know <laughs> 45 divided by 4 is not an integer. We don't even have to think about the, the logic of why it must be true. This only leaves D. This one better be right. Hopefully our logic has worked. And let's say 45 divided by K must be an integer. Yes, absolutely. Because K times J, and K and J are both integers, we're told that up here, equals a negative 45. Negative 45 and positive 45. Again, we're just putting a negative somewhere. But those same core numbers are going to be involved. So yes, if I divide 45 by k, or in this case I know negative, but here, 45 divided by k, j is going to be one of these numbers, depending on which of those numbers k is. So it's going to be an integer. It has to be, because k times j is that. And you can kind of, you can adapt this and say, all right, to get to 45 divided by k, boom, because I divide, <laughs> we'd say like a negative J, because I'm dividing both sides by K, and I get to that, and if I could divide by a negative K on both sides, then I could um, end up with negative J equals 45 over K, that's your algebra version of it. But again, we know J is an integer, so negative J is also an integer. I'm, I'm sorry if this one wasn't as clear as some of my other explanations. Because it is so sort of conceptual, it is not anything you're going to find in your math book. I really hope that that made sense. If you have any questions, you know, please post them down below. But yeah, it really is just this sort of conceptual idea, thinking about how FOIL works. Yeah, they're just testing your creativity, I guess, with the math and not really a, a single math concept. Hey guys, just a quick heads up. I've got some cool stuff coming for y'all, including a free course full of SAT tips and tricks, as well as an exhaustively complete course on everything you need to know for the SAT, both math and reading. So subscribe to the channel to get notified when that goes live. I'm also going to put it in the comments and description below as soon as it does. In the meantime, if this video was helpful or useful in any way, please let YouTube know. Comment, like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.